today on Fixing the Money Thing. The blessing of the Lord are the promises God has given you. Think about this. If the God that made everything you see and made yourself and invented life gave you 7,000 promises directly to you and he cannot lie, I think you would call that a blessing. We continue Gary's life-altering teaching, The Power of Rest, today on Fixing the Money Thing. God's Word promises us the ability, through the double portion, to live a stress-free life, stay on assignment, and serve our purpose. From Faith Life Church in New Albany, Ohio, Gary Cassie's message, The Power of Rest. As long as you think as a slave and as someone who is judged by doing, and you only think about doing, you will miss receiving from Father's house. Because you will judge yourself unworthy if you have not done enough to justify your vision of what is required to receive. In the prodigal son story, the prodigal son says, I know what I'll do. I'll go back to my father's house. All the servants there have more than enough. I am not worthy to be his son. I'll go back as a servant. And that's how the earth curse system has trained you as a servant. When you get up in the morning, you judge yourself. Do I look good enough? Did I do good enough? Am I own, did I pray long enough? Did I do this well enough? Okay, I checked all the boxes. Oh, I feel pretty good about myself. I guess God will listen to me today. You've missed the entire point. Entire. The enemy is the accuser of the brother, and he will box you in a corner of condemnation over and over and over again that you can never get out of until you know who you are and what Jesus did for you. You tell him to shut up. I am the prince. I'm, actually, I'm the son of God. I, you know, God has called me righteous. You got something about that, you go talk to him about it. <laughs> got to think different. You can't dream up new places and new things with your nose to the grindstone being already overwhelmed. You got to think different. Who are you? You can't be a slave to provision. You can't be a slave in the earth curse system you got to start asking questions. How did the fish show up? How did those deer show up? How did this happen? How did Jesus feed those multitudes? How did this, you know. He didn't tap into the labor system, the provision system, the earth curse, to get those miracles done. He heard from God. The fish are there in the deep water. He talked about that. All right, so illustration I use in my conferences is that if I was walking down your street, and you've heard this many times before probably, but if you haven't, this is an interesting analogy. And I'm walking down your street. There's a brown paper bag in the ditch on the other side of the road of your property. And I pick it up. There's $5 million in it. You're the only person I know on the street, so I borrow your phone. You're a member of the church. Hey, so-and-so, I found this $5 million, and I use your phone. I'm going to call the sheriff. I call the sheriff. They say no no one's claimed it missing. You can keep it. Now, that wouldn't happen that way. But for illustrative purposes, let's just say it could. I'm really happy. How about you? I'm in your house and your kitchen on the phone. How are you feeling about it? Don't lie to me about this. (laughs) You're not feeling good about it at all. Because it makes you feel bad about yourself. Right? Right? Makes you feel bad about yourself, like you're a loser, like you're not measuring up, you don't have the $5 million. And then the only option then is to become indignant and jealous because you found it close to my house. How dare you? It's not, that's not fair. Because you've been trained to equate what should happen based on labor. If I came in here and I was exhausted and I said, Drenda and I worked 18 hours a day for the last five years, we finally paid our house off last night, you'd all clap. It's, oh, that's awesome. You know why? Because someone beat the system. And you think, well, if we just work hard enough, they did it, we can do it. That is not how the kingdom operates. You have learned that in the earth curse system And you don't even realize, I don't even realize how we have been trapped in our thinking to these ways of thinking. We have been trained that way. And you're going to have to retrain yourself to capture the opportunities God has for you. 
You're not a hireling. You're not a hireling. You're a son and daughter of God, the God that made all things. Who are you? Acts, the second chapter, verse 32. God raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it, exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. This is the day of Pentecost. For David did not ascend to heaven, but yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 says, And God has raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Where are we seated at? Where? You're not standing. You're seated. You're ruling. You're seated on the right hand of the Father. You are royalty. You, you get this. You got to know who you are in the kingdom. The Bible says, whatever you bind on earth shall be loose, uh, bound by heaven, and what you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You carry the kingdom's authority. You're seated on the right hand of the Father. But in the earth realm, everyone's tired of running. Everyone has been raised with an orphan mentality. So we got to talk about that. There is an escape, though, from this running and sweating mentality. It's Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, and he adds no sorrow with it. The Hebrew word for sorrow means hard labor. This is, of course, referring back to Genesis chapter 3. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth. What is the blessing? We talked about this in our latest series called The Grain Pile Principle. I would get that and review that, but basically... The blessing of the Lord are the promises God has given you. Think about this. If the God that made everything you see and made yourself and invented life gave you 7,000 promises directly to you and he cannot lie, I think you would call that a blessing. The blessing of the Lord. Matthew chapter eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Now, this is the rest we're talking about in this series. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and I'm humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, of course, two oxen and a yoke. He says, take my yoke upon you. Jesus is going to pull it. Come in behind him. He can handle it. It's easy. All right. Got to learn how this works. I was doing a little dinner for about 25 pastors uh, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. I'm not sure how far along ago it was. And I was talking along the lines of these principles because, listen, after being in our financial situation nine years and you get out and you see like a light bulb, things begin to change and you begin to step into things you've only dreamt about, you're pretty excited. <laughs> so I was talking, we concluded the meeting and all the pastors left and then we were cleaning the room up. One had been sitting in the car waiting to come back in because it was, a, you know, they knew, all, they knew each other and he didn't want to speak in front of all these friends. So he came in after the meeting. His wife and he came up with a $100 check. He said, this is the end of our money. We want to sow this. We lose our house on Friday. We need $7,700 to bring it current. We have no checks. We have no income before that date. We have no hope. We're going to sow this. Believe, believe in God for, uh, you know, a way of escape. So we prayed with them. Now, in their garage, they had a silk screen machine. They would do some T-shirts every once in a while for youth groups or some small projects. But that Monday, this meeting was on Saturday night. That Monday, they received three calls for business for silk screening. They had to hustle to get it done, but they did $8,700 in five days and they brought their house current. And he's pretty excited about that. Right now, you should be thinking and asking questions, how did that happen? That was the largest week he ever had, ever. And they called him. How did that happen? I was in another pastor's meeting down south. I think it was Charlotte. I, I, don't, we, I don't remember that meeting was. It was in uh, South Carolina, I think, or North, North Carolina. Anyway, this is down south. 250 pastors. I was in the room, and this pastor comes over very excitedly. 
I need to shake your hand. I mean, he was, I got to shake your hand. Well, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. He says, I got to tell you my story. And he lives in Germany. He said, my son came into the study one weekend as I was, one week as I was preparing for that weekend's message. And he came up to me and said, I want you to agree with me for a PlayStation 2. He said, what? He said, well, I got these CDs by Gary Cassie. I don't know how he, he's only like 10, 12 years old. I mean, maybe 12. How, I don't know how he got my CDs in Germany. I don't know. But he had them. And his dad didn't know he had them. <laughs> maybe a friend. I don't know. He's listening to these CDs. And he says, you know, I, I, I'd like to have a PlayStation 2, Dad. And I want to sew for that. And I want to call it done according to Mark eleven twenty four. I want to believe God for a PlayStation 2. His dad said, all right, I'll agree with you. So they prayed and they agreed. And the next day a guy called the dad and said, is your son available? I need, I need some work done today. And he did the work and he got the money that day and he paid cash for his PlayStation 2. Now that kind of changed his mindset, right? Just like Peter, James, and John, they were so astonished. They left everything. They saw a different system operate. He saw a system operate. So two weeks later, he comes back to his dad and says, I want you to agree with me for one more thing. What's that? I want you to agree with me for muscles. <laughs> His dad said, well, wait a minute, you know, that's going to take, uh, you're, you're going to be involved with that. I said, I know, Dad, I know. I just want to, I'm going to believe God for muscles. He said, all right. They agreed. They prayed. The next morning, a station wagon pulls into the driveway. He recognizes it's a member of their church, comes to the front door and says, hey, we are cleaning the garage out. And I just thought maybe your son might want this set of barbells that I haven't used for all these years that were just sitting in my garage. I brought them by, just thought maybe he might like them. Now, this pastor here in uh, South Carolina looked at me and says, that's when I told my son, give me those CDs. <laughs> yeah. 